Ignition. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, ICBMs. These powerful nuclear weapons, which travel at incredible speeds, have been present in our lives for about 80 years. But we, as a human race, are still here. Promising to wreak great destruction, will they eventually lead to the destruction of humanity, or will their presence remind us that peace is more important? Nobody wanted nuclear weapons. But once scientists learned of the colossal power of the process of nuclear fission, no country wanted to be at the receiving end of these. So the race was on for nuclear armament. The staggering power of nuclear fission was first tested at Los Alamos under the Manhattan Project. Initially, Technology only allowed for the dropping of these weapons as bombs. Still, once nuclear fusion was discovered, rockets were needed to protect air crews from the power of these even more powerful weapons. From that point on, ballistic missiles were the only viable answer. Once ballistic missiles were developed, they were placed on all types of platforms, including the hard mobile launcher. The hard mobile launcher, HML, is a mobile radiation-hardened truck transporter and erector launcher designed to transport and fire the MGM-134 Midget Man missile. Two versions were built as prototypes. An eight-wheel design and trailer were the focal points of the Boeing Hard Mobile Launcher prototype. In an effort to build a system that could make use of pre-existing infrastructure, this method placed an emphasis on road maneuverability. Martin Marietta prioritized a tracked version, the mobile track system, and collaborated with Caterpillar on its development. This concept focused on off-road capabilities and survivability in harsh or damaging terrain. During the Cold War, hard mobile launchers were primarily intended to improve the survivability of intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs. The idea was to make these weapons harder to target by constantly moving them, making preemptive strikes useless. These huge trucks were radiation-hardened and capable of withstanding the rigors of continuous deployment while carrying and launching nuclear-armed missiles. Although the idea was plausible at one time, these prototypes were scrapped at the end of the Cold War. Despite its intention to discourage surprise attacks, hard mobile launchers experienced obstacles. Their large bulk and continuous mobility made them expensive to maintain limiting launch readiness. Furthermore, advances in detection and alternate launch platforms, such as submarines, reduced their effectiveness. 
It is easier to hide a submarine than it is to hide a truck. These factors eventually surpass the survivability benefits, resulting in the concept's discontinuation. A concept that was put in place was the placement of many ICBMs in hardened silos, strong enough to withstand direct attacks. Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles ICBMs, are long-range missiles capable of delivering nuclear warheads across great distances. They travel in ballistic trajectory exploding high and then arcing towards their targets at great speeds. Minuteman 3 missiles are the United States' principal land-based ICBMs. To secure these essential assets, they are kept in reinforced underground silos. These silos are built to withstand close nuclear bomb explosions, keeping the ICBM operation. Each silo houses one Minuteman 3 missile, which is ready to launch at any moment. The silos themselves are about 80 feet deep, with enormous blast doors safeguarding the missiles within. Land-based ICBMs are part of the United States nuclear triad, a three-pronged system geared toward ensuring a second strike capability in times of nuclear war. The remaining parts of the triad include ballistic missile submarines and strategic bombers. When a verified launch order is received, the Minuteman 3 silo's armored blast doors slide open. The missile's first stage motor fires, propelling it out of the silo with tremendous force. The missile ascends quickly, its guidance system altering its trajectory to the pre-programmed target. Once aloft, the missile stages separate and the warheads continue their ballistic trajectory, eventually re-entering the atmosphere to strike their objectives. The entire launch process is managed from a remote launch control center. Missile Launch Control Centers LCCs, are heavily fortified subterranean bunkers that house a team of two missile combat officers. These crews communicate constantly with higher level officials and keep track of the status of their assigned Minuteman 3 missiles, which are located in distant launch facilities, LFs. To increase survival, each LCC manages many LFs distributed across a large geographic area. When the authenticated launch order arrives, the entire LCC crew must agree to proceed. They then send customized launch codes straight to the missile silo. After receiving these codes, the missile's onboard systems are activated and the launch sequence can commence. Item 133. Another leg of the nuclear triad is the ballistic missile submarines, 
such as the Ohio class. Ohio class submarines are titans of the sea and the quietest submarines in existence. The ballistic missile submarines, SSBNs in this class, constitute the foundation of the United States Navy nuclear deterrent. Each SSBN may carry up to 20 Trident II D-5 submarine-launched ballistic missiles, SLBMs, with each missile carrying multiple nuclear warheads. Their principal duty is to remain concealed beneath the waters, allowing them to launch a devastating second assault in the event of a nuclear attack. Ohio-class submarines also include guided missile submarines, which can support a variety of strategic missions. These submarines are among the largest ever built and are intended for long-term stealthy patrols, making them extremely difficult to identify and track. To prevent the U.S. from losing control of its ICBMs, these missiles can be controlled from an airborne E-6B Mercury aircraft. In most cases, the E-6B Mercury has no direct control over ground-based ICBMs. It primarily serves as a communication relay and aerial command post. It maintains communication between national leaders and launches control centers, even when ground infrastructure is destroyed. However, the E-6B is also outfitted with an airborne launch control system, ALCS, as a backup. This mechanism can only be activated in extreme circumstances and with the highest authority. Launching a missile from an E-6B would be a very uncommon and tightly regulated occurrence. One, two, three, the crew would get explicit and authenticated launch commands. Once verified, the launch control staff on board painstakingly carry out emergency launch protocols with the ALCS. The E-6B Mercury has a large crew to carry out its difficult task. This includes the flight crew who fly the plane, communication specialists who control the aircraft's extensive communication systems, and the battle staff. The battle staff consists of Navy and Air Force personnel who control mission-critical strategic communications, as well as, if necessary, the Airborne Launch Control System. When the launch protocol is received, these personnel must carry it out. This task includes targeting, authorization code transmission, and final checks before beginning the launch sequence for the designated ICBM. Because of the enormous responsibility and potential consequences, tremendous vigilance and stringent protocols are required throughout the launch process. Although nuclear weapons have the potential to wipe out humanity, their existence also acts as a deterrence. Because of this, the U.S. military maintains its nuclear triad consisting of ICBMs on land, SLBMs, and air-launched nuclear weapons. When the fateful day should arrive, the launch of a nuclear weapon is not as easy as pushing a button. All personnel must verify the sequence to ensure no missiles are launched accidentally. 
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.